Welcome to State of Tech. I'm going to show you how to use TweetBot version 3 for the iPhone. If we open up the application, you can see it's going to launch and you see the whole new redesign for iOS 7. Now TweetBots is version 3.0 which is iOS 7 compatible and it has that nice iOS 7 design and flat feel that we've been accustomed to since the release of iOS 7. We have all the same basic functionalities. You see we can scroll down from the top to refresh. We can uh, swipe down, we have our search our timeline, where we can search for different circumstances or anything. Say we want to search for Apple, we can go ahead and type that in. It's going to search and load up all the tweets that are pertaining to anything Apple related, such as usernames or any tweets that include the name Apple. Go ahead and cancel out of there. We have our media timeline where we can tap on the media up here, and we can go ahead and scroll through and view all of the media related links that are in our timeline where people have tweeted images or maybe even video or anything like that. We can go ahead and view this here in our timeline here for our media timeline. Now in the top left hand corner is our profile and if we tap on that it's going to allow us to select an account or even add accounts. So if we were to have multiple accounts they'd be here in this menu and if I swipe over on the right of my name you see I get a red circle X letting me know I can delete my account. If I come back into the accounts and tap the plus button in the bottom left hand corner it's going to allow me to add an account here in Twitter. So if I want to I'll go ahead and type in a username and email address here and I can go ahead and add in an account. By default, when you first launch it, it's going to load up any accounts that you have signed in on iOS. Now if we hit the settings icon right here in the bottom corner as well, we'll tap that and now we can go through some different settings where we have some general and then some account. So right here in the sounds, we can choose to play all, notifications only, or none. Go ahead and select the one you want to use there. Our display, we can choose to display our full name, username, or both. And the date format, we can do relative or absolute. Again, tapping on one of these is going to go ahead and change that setting for us. Come back out, we have our streaming option, which uh, streaming works only on a Wi-Fi network. It'll pin us to the top, and it will continue to go ahead and stream and scroll us up to each new tweet that comes in on TweetBot. So we turn that on, we can go ahead and stream that, and we can even pin it to the top to where it never moves away from the top and just keeps actively adding in new tweets. So if we go ahead and uh, come back in here to the main settings, we'll choose our quote format, which we can choose a retweet, a standard quote, a retweet with a comment, or we can do a via user. Uh, whichever tweet format you like to use for the retweet, go ahead and select that here in this menu. Now the browser option, we can either choose to use Safari, 1Password, or Chrome. Now you will have to have 1Password or Chrome installed to be able to use that browser, but Safari comes standard on all iOS devices. So if you have 1Password or Chrome and you'd rather use that browser, go ahead and select one of those, but if you have just the default Safari, just go ahead and leave it Safari. You can choose to open links in TweetBot or you can go ahead and shut that off based upon your preference here. Now in our account settings out here in the main settings, we'll tap on that and we can choose notifications and then we have some services. If we'd like to get push notifications, we'll go ahead and enable that and you see we can get mentions for all, none, or people that follow us and go ahead and tap on the one you'd like to get. Notifications we can receive are for direct messages, retweets, favorites, and follows. Go ahead and slide those on or off, and whichever one you want will go ahead and get pushed to your device. And you can see the last notification that we've got, and we can go ahead and test notification, which is going to send us a test notification, and you see we've gotten it just fine, so all those test push services are working. Now coming back out to services, we can choose all of the different services that we want to use for our URL shortening, image upload, video upload, read later, sync, and mobilizer. So we have URL shortening, we can select from any one of these services in here. You see we've got Cloud App and Dropler and even Bitly. We can do an image upload service, we can go from anywhere from Cloud App, Dropler, Imagely, TwitPic, Twitter, YFrog, or even a custom. Video uploader, again, we can choose from any one of these services in this menu. Our read later, we can choose none, bit.ly, instapaper, pinboard, pocket, readability, reading list, and whichever one you choose, you'll actually be asked to sign into your account, so that way it can send any tweets that you want to read later into that actual service. Now syncing, which is a great feature for multiple devices, if I were to have TweetBot installed on one iPhone and I had an iPod Touch with me as well or even an iPad, I can go ahead and sync my position in my timeline and DM read statuses across other instances of TweetBot. 
So we can go ahead and enable that with uh, iCloud or a tweet marker. Uh, since iCloud is a built-in iOS 7 feature, that's the one that I currently use. But if you have a tweet marker account, which I believe is a paid service, you can enable that one as well, and you can choose to display a visual marker. Now, Mobilizer, we can choose either Google or Readability. You see it strips JavaScript, CSS, and images to make loading web pages faster, and some sites may not function properly with this feature. So go ahead and enable this if you'd like to, but by default, it's set to none. And now at the bottom in here as well, we can reset our account cache, which is going to delete all of the images and cache that we have in the account in the application. And then we have about tap bots where we can see and we can view other apps they actually have. And then we can even follow them on Twitter and rate this in the app store and view the privacy policy. And then one last option down here is the contact us and the version number below that. So coming back into our account here, now we've got the timeline again. You see in the top right hand corner, you see that number four? That's my tweet marker letting me know how many more tweets I have to read before since my last refresh. Now I can go ahead and down here at the bottom, I have some tabs to go through. I have my main timeline. If I hit the at symbol, it's going to show me all the mentions that I have, and I can do the same pull down to refresh and pull to search. I have my DMs, which are right here with this mail icon. And the last two are customizable tabs. So right now, this one I have set to a search field. But if I tap and hold, you can see I have a few different options. I can view retweets, favorites, deleted, and even some lists. So I'll go ahead and tap in each one of these. I've got mute filters. I've got favorites, retweets, and I can even come back to the search. And on the last one, I have my profile. And if I tap on that, I have the same options where I can go ahead and customize these tabs. So one option you did notice is we have the mute filters where we can mute people, keywords, hashtags, or clients. This is by default mute filters are only applied to our main timeline and lists, and we can have mentions muted as part of keyword filters. So if we tap edit, we can go ahead and hit done, or if we tap edit again, we'll hit the plus button, and we can mute a keyword or we can mute a client. So if we go ahead and do that, see a keyword, See our keyword was Apple. If we type in Apple, it's going to match tweets. You see 18 out of 217 that I've got to read will be muted and I won't see them in my timeline. That doesn't mean it's going to block the person. It just means that these tweets are going to be muted for a while so that I don't see them in my timeline. This is going to be great for if you like to keep up with the show and they like to live tweet the show. You can go ahead and put mute keywords in for that specific instance of the show or a sports team or anything like that. That way you don't get the episode or anything spoiled for you on Twitter. Now we'll go ahead and put this back to the search field and then we'll come into our timeline and we'll show you some functions in here as well. If we tap on a tweet, it gives us this menu down here at the bottom where we can go ahead and reply, retweet, favorite, share, or even view some settings. So if we tap on share, you can see we can send a pocket, copy it, and even email it. Favorite it, we'll go ahead and favorite that and add a star to it. Retweet it, will ask us to retweet to our followers or quote it. And then reply is going to bring up the compose sheet where it's going to send us automatically into a reply mode for that tweet. And then the settings are going to bring out where we can view details, retweets, view and fave star and even translate. Now there's another option too where we can actually swipe over from the right hand side and go ahead and view the details that way as, as well. We can see how many favorites it has, retweets, how it was sent, and if anybody had replied to it we would see it down here in this menu as well. Now the one last thing that we can do a tweet bot is actually tweet. So in the top right hand corner if we tap that compose sheet it's going to bring us up here where we can actually begin typing in our tweets. You see we have quick access to our camera, so if we tap in the camera, we'll give it access to our photos. We can automatically use the last photo taken, take a new photo, or even choose from our library. And then we have quick access to mention people and do hashtags. So if I was actually going to start a tweet, let's just say, um, I think we'll do the at, we'll do state of tech. You see how it automatically begins typing in usernames, we'll go ahead and type that in, and we'll just do a hashtag and you see how it's automatically making everything ready for me. So if I want to, I'll go and tweet that and it's actually going to mention that user account and then also add that hashtag into my tweet. And if I hit close, I can either delete this tweet or save it as a draft to come back to it later and then send that tweet out whenever I'm ready. And this is how you're going to use TweetBot for the iPhone.